Hi everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Dr. Brian Murphy and this evening I'm going to be talking about racket sport injuries unraveled. So the first slide here, where you don't want to be, and that first picture looks like, everyone kind of knows who that is, looks like he's hurt his elbow. And this young lady, not quite sure what she's hurt, but she doesn't look happy. And this third person is grabbing their knee with pain. So I think if you're a tennis player or a racket sport player, you can probably relate to all three of these scenarios. And it's just not a fun place to be. What do all racket athletes want? Well, they want to make sure pain doesn't interfere with their game. They want to make sure that they can hit the ball harder and faster. They want to play more consistently. And finally, they want to beat their playing partners. And one more, they want to move athletically. How do we set ourselves up to avoid injury? As a doctor of physical therapy, one of my primary roles in helping athletes is really prevention of injury because it just helps you enjoy the game without delays and without unneeded pain and unneeded, uh, basically just unneeded nuisance. Uh, if a sports medicine professional told you that there are ways you can avoid injury and at the same time perform better, would you be interested in hearing what they had to say? And I would think that because you're here, that answer is yes. Have you ever been told this by a medical professional? Just stop playing or take four weeks off and rest or just take this medication and come back or we need to get an x-ray or an MRI or you need to have injections or hopefully not, you need to have surgery. Those are things that I hear a lot of my racket sport athletes telling me when they've had injuries and I'm here to tell you there's a different way. A little bit about me. I grew up in South Florida. I started Pinnacle Physical Therapy because I knew there was a better way to help athletes and not tell them all those things that we just went over and also to um, really take care of them in a different way than they're used to being taken care of. I work with a lot of racket athletes currently and just their consistent story of always being hurt, always being frustrated, having to take medications. It's just a, it's a, it's a group of athletes that I've found just really don't know what to do and they need information and they don't want to take time off and they don't want to take medications and they don't want to get the MRI and they're just striving and thirsty for information about how can I help myself get out of pain. Why listen to me? I've been in sports medicine and rehab for about 15 years. Um, I'm a clinical specialist in orthopedics, so within physical therapy, much like in medicine, there are subspecialties, and one of my subspecialties is in orthopedics, which is bones and joints and nerves and uh, muscles and tendons. And I did a residency program down in the Orlando, Florida area with a hospital system called Orlando Sports Medicine and Rehab. And um, I've had my own practice in West Little Rock for about five years now. And I've been here uh, serving our members of this country club for four years. I'm sure one of the questions you're asking too is why are you still struggling with injury? And after everything you've tried, why are you still allowing pain to dictate your enjoyment of your sport and or even your participation in it? A lot of people um, are forced to take time away because they don't want it to get worse, they don't want to have surgery, um, and, and really kind of finding out what are some of the things that you all have tried. Um, you know, and just, we, we've tried a variety of different things and it's that insanity of, I, doing the same thing over and over again. I'm not getting any different response. So what do we need to do to change that? Well, you're in luck. Being here is a great start to your new and improved racket game. Optimizing not only an athlete's, you know, pain is a good motivator, but we don't want to just think about, well, how are we putting out every little fire 
we also want to think about how can we improve your performance and maximize your body to play better and avoid injury. And it doesn't have to be complicated, time consuming, expensive, certainly compared to other things you've tried. And it does, however, need to be very specific to your body because you as an athlete have a specific history. You have an injury history, you have a story that needs to be told, uh, you have a health history that needs to be taken into account to help develop a plan of care that is going to best get you the outcome that you're looking for. So it has to be specific, can't be cookie cutter. Today we'll be discussing three things. The first, easy things that you can do to reduce your risk for injury. Second, what you need to do when you have pain. And finally, what you can immediately do to get relief of your pain. So that first one, things to reduce your injury risk, simple, warm up, okay? We don't see any professional athlete that plays these days that does not warm up their body. It's so critical to be able to get your body prepared to play, but also to avoid injury. There's a there's some misinformation out there about the difference between like a dynamic warm up and a static stretching warm up. And the static stretching is that lower um, lower force stretch, but for an elongated period of time, maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, those types of stretches actually have been shown to reduce the muscle's ability to generate power and force and output. So that type of stretching is not something that you want to be doing if you're a dynamic athlete like a pickleball player or a tennis player or a racquetball player. You want to be doing more of a dynamic type warm up, which is very um, short holds, explosive movements, uh, changing in directions, addressing all of the different components of your body since racket sports include, you know, shoulder, trunk, knees, uh, hips, ankles. You have to kind of warm up the whole system. Number two, what do you do when you have pain? So pain in the body is always a way that the body is telling you to pay attention, to don't ignore pain. It's always real and it always, not always, but often tells us that something is not right. So we all have a choice to listen to our body. And how I explain it to patients is it's very easy to control a smoldering fire. You know, you're out camping with your kids, you're finished making the s'mores, you gotta put the fire out. It's a little tiny fire, you can just pour some water on it, put some dirt over the top of it, it's controlled, it just goes out, no problem. Versus a forest fire is when it's completely out of control, your pain, as an analogy, has been there for six months, it's getting worse, you've tried a bunch of different things, don't let it get to the point where it's, a, where it's a forest fire. You've got to get into the right person, the right professional that can keep it a smoldering fire because it's a lot easier to deal with for you and for the professional than it is when it's a forest fire, okay? The need for imaging, that's another misconception of I've hurt myself, I need to go get an x-ray to make sure there's not something broken or not something pulled or not something torn, okay? The vast majority of things outside of a very traumatic event are not going to be something that requires early imaging. Conservative care, like physical therapy, is going to be the initial point of contact for you with a health professional. We can give you guidance if you do come to us first and it's not something that we can help you with. We can guide you and say, yes, this is really something that you probably need to go in to see a medical doctor and get an x-ray just to rule out that there's not a fracture, to rule out there's not something more severe, okay? So that, and especially in the state of Arkansas, physical therapy is a direct access provider. So you can see us without having seen your physician first. And that's always a good option because we're very conservative. We don't, we're not gonna prescribe you drugs. We're not gonna tell you to take time off. We're not gonna do surgery on you. Um, necessity for taking medications, that's another one. 
Swelling is a normal process that your body goes through. Okay, your body's releasing a bunch of chemicals into the area where the injury happened to help it heal and to start the process of tissue healing. If we start to slow that process down by taking a bunch of anti-inflammatories, that is going to slow the healing process. And it's also actually going to um, be very taxing on your body. Your, your liver has to break that down. Your, uh, your kidneys have to break that down. So there can be some side effects of, of jumping too quickly to anti-inflammatories or other drugs. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Thirdly, uh, what you can do immediately to get relief or to start getting some of your questions answered. Acute versus chronic. So what I mean by that, an acute injury is one, I'm, I'm running, I'm sprinting, I collapse because my knee buckles in, I've got a ton of pain versus maybe that, that elbow is just kind of continuing to hurt every time I play tennis, it really hurts, but it's been there for like two years, okay? How you treat acute injuries is a whole lot different than how you treat chronic injuries, okay? Um, keeping that in mind, you also have to understand what, what we call the mechanism of injury. Was it a traumatic event that you uh, slipped on the court and banged your knee on the court, or was it something that maybe was more of a long-term process that um, has a chronic nature to it? Th that helps us as healthcare professionals determine what the problem is and to kind of see a better picture of what we need to do to help our athlete uh, get back out of pain and get back on the court. Technique and form, I think, is not to be underappreciated. If, you're, if you are playing a racket sport and you have access to a professional, a coach, uh, there are little tweaks and tricks that can be done to help, A, avoid injury, and B, maybe to change your technique and form to make sure that you're not doing something that biomechanically and movement related is gonna cause some, some of the problems that you're dealing with. You know, like a tennis elbow is a perfect example. One of, the, one of the tricks that you can do is changing the girth of your grip, and, and that can just change the dynamics of using the muscles in your form if you just simply change the grip, and that then allows you to start playing more pain-free and that's just a quick, easy way to kind of get, get a change and see a change immediately. Uh, another thing that you can do immediately is get an assessment. Uh, there happens to be right here at your country club, a highly trained physical therapist who specializes in sports medicine and is uh, eager and excited to help you and to help you navigate this period of time where you've got a lot of questions. Um, racket sports require so many different things from the body, balance and flexibility and range of motion and strength and power that a professional that can look at your entire body and how it's all working together, I would argue is of utmost importance. If somebody's just looking very solely at the area of pain, I can almost guarantee that they're missing other parts of your body that are maybe driving why that say your elbow for instance is having pain we call it regional interdependence your elbow is connected to your shoulder and to your wrist are there things that are happening above and below your joint that need to be addressed as well a little bit more about our clinic and and what we do at pinnacle physical therapy and and here at the chanel country club We've got 96 Google reviews. We're working on number 100. It's, com it's coming soon. Got a 4.9 star average. We just have, we've been blessed with a lot of uh, fantastic people in the community that have come and had great results with us. And this is just one uh, testimonial from this young man actually was a, a C-130 pilot uh, up in Jacksonville at the Air Force Base. He had had a racket injury um, and it was a, a really bad fracture of his ankle he actually ended up needing surgery on his ankle but then was receiving um, physical therapy that just wasn't getting him the improvement that he wanted and when he came to me he required so much kind of hands-on and skilled techniques that without that there would have been no qualms in me saying he probably wouldn't have been 
fit to um, perform his role as a pilot and pass his training. Uh, so I think it was really, it was really important that he actually kind of went out and found us at Pinnacle and we were really able to get him in such a short period of time, a great outcome. He was back to running. He was back to doing all his, uh, his PT for the military. He's back to flying the C-130 without an issue with his ankle when he was using the pedals on the plane. Um, another one that comes to mind is, is a gentleman named Stuart Irby. He, he was a competitive tennis player growing up. Uh, he had a back injury that really kind of limited his ability to do much of anything. And we were able to get him not only back to uh, a pain-free state, but we also got him to a point where he said he's playing better tennis than he's ever been playing before. He feels fantastic. It's been a really a true transformation for him to to incorporate some strengthening things and some preventative things to really get him uh, to be a better athlete after an injury. I don't want people to have to have an injury before they realize that. I think physical therapists, there's education that needs to happen to the community to say, we are professionals that can help you avoid injury as much as we can help you rehab from injury. So keep that in mind. Uh, additional resources for you, some information about us, uh, our contact email and our phone number. Uh, we moved clinics about six months ago, so we're at uh, 12511 Cantrell Road, uh, right over by, uh, used to be the Iberia Bank, and there's a Starbucks there that, uh, that we like to frequent from time to time. Uh, and then our website has a link there uh, that you can find some more information about resources that we have on our website. Uh, but what I'm proposing today uh, for you that have taken your time this evening to be here is... way I can go previous slide let's see all right perfect <clears throat> so I do offer what's called a free discovery visit and because people are they're scared they're not sure what to do I felt like this was something that I owed to my potential patients to come in and have it be a sit-down conversation of what's going on um, and I can answer some of your questions. I can tell you whether PT is going to help. I can tell you a rough timeline of how long I think it's going to help you to get better. I can, we can talk about insurance and costs and things like that. Um, but it's really an opportunity for me to help start, start to guide you along making a healthcare decision that you feel is right for you and that I feel like is something I can help you with. So discovery visit, it's just a great entry point. I'm not sure. I don't know about this Brian guy. He seems really nice. Not sure. I want to go explore that. And, and we do that with a discovery visit.